everybody, Steve here at Chalmette National Cemetery in New Orleans. Actually in Chalmette, which I guess is a suburb or parish of New Orleans, Louisiana. And it's about 15 minutes from downtown New Orleans. And I'm here to visit the final resting place, the Civil War gravesite of Sarah Rosetta Wakeman. She was a woman, but she dressed as a man to enlist to fight in the Civil War. But she came from a poor family, didn't have much money, and found that she could make a lot more money not that it was probably a lot of money, but a lot more money as a soldier than she could doing anything else. So she enlisted as Lyons Wakeman in the 153rd New York Volunteer Infantry, and she died of dysentery after fighting in the Battle of Pleasant Hill in Louisiana. The gravesite I'm looking for doesn't have a GPS, but her Find a Grave Memorial page says that she's laid to rest in Section 52, but I didn't see any section markers anywhere, which is unusual for a national cemetery. And then I just happened to see this one. So they're just a little bit away from the street. 143. All right, it looks like I'm heading in the right direction. It must be down this way. This one's a little bit different than the others here. I see a number of different plaques. I'm gonna to have to take a look at some of the plaques and see what they say. The Chalamet battlefield is right next door. Yeah, I see something coming up here. All right, section 80, so I'm getting closer. She was 21 years old when she died in the Civil War. Now, she didn't die in the battle from fighting. She actually died, I believe I read it was from dysentery, which I'm sure lots of soldiers probably died from that as well. When I first heard her story, the first thing I thought about was how she got away with it, how she blended in. How in those tight quarters with only other men did she go undetected? I mean, obviously there were times when she must have had to take off her clothes or to go to the bathroom or any number of things that would have revealed that she was a woman. So that seemed very strange to me. I haven't read the book. I, I'm gonna have to read it. I'm, I'm curious. Have any of you read it? Feel free to comment and let us know what you th think about the book down below in the comments section. But. I read just recently somewhere, and maybe it was while I was doing a little research for this video, I read that actually it wasn't that uncommon for women to dress up as men and enlist in the, the Civil War, and I think it was because they needed anyone they could get. They needed soldiers, so they were willing to look the other way. I can't remember the whole story that I read, but it was very interesting, and it made it sound like maybe the the military just looked the other way, and I guess the soldiers looked the other way, or maybe they were happy to have a woman, or maybe more than a few women, disguised in drag as part of the military. It really does seem like it would be almost impossible not to be detected at some point. Also seems very strange when you think about it, I had never really thought about it before, but can you imagine fighting a war during the Civil War when things were very primitive anyway, and how often did they bathe? I mean, I guess I just would assume that when they happened upon a river, they might have just jumped in the river and taken off their clothes and skinny dipped and jumped in the river to clean off once a month or so. I don't know. So if any of you happen to know, if you've read the book, or if you happen to know a little bit more about her story, please share it with us. I would love to read your comments, and I'm sure other viewers would as well. I'm going to stand here in the shade where it's a little bit cooler. There's a nice breeze. It's very hot and humid today. Even though it's April, it feels like it's the middle of summer. But the breeze off the port really helps. Now the smell is not so great. St. Bernard Port. I think that's where the smell is coming from. It smells like oil or something, but it's not a real pleasant aroma. Normally when I visit cemeteries, I, I talk about how wonderful they smell, the flowers and the trees, and they usually are so fragrant. This is just the opposite of that. I don't know if it's always like that or if it's just like that right now. Maybe it's an oil refinery next door or something, I don't know. So if you're not familiar with her story, she was born on January 16th, 1843 in Alton, New York, and died June 19th, 1864, at the age of 21, here in New Orleans, Louisiana. I'm looking at her Find a Grave Memorial page memorial, and now I see where the name Lyons comes from. That was the name she enlisted in. So the reason her story has been remembered is because there was a book written about her called An Uncommon Soldier, edited by Lauren Cook Burgess, and it's a compilation of her letters, I'm guessing letters back to her family, and talking about life as a soldier, and her experiences as a woman dressed as a man pretending to be a male soldier during the Civil War. 
I just added a GPS to her Find a Grave Memorial page. And thank you to whoever it was who took the picture and left instructions on what section she was in and which grave is hers. That really helped me find her grave site. There's, I mean, it's a fairly small cemetery, as you can see. It's just this side and that side. There's one road that goes down the middle. But there are thousands of grave sites here. So without that helpful information, it could have taken hours to find her grave site. I think it's amazing and I'm so happy to see that her story has been remembered and that her very unique life hasn't been lost to history. I'm sure there were many soldiers like her whose stories never made it to the history books or to a Find a Grave Memorial page. I'm also happy to see that people have visited her grave site and just recently because these three flags are some of the only flags here in the entire cemetery. Well, I see one there. I see some flowers back there, but very few flowers or flags in the cemetery. So that's pretty awesome that not only do people remember her, but they're actually coming to visit her gravesite. Let's go see what's over this fence. I think this was the one of the battlefields. I think this was the Civil War battlefield, the Chal Chalmette Civil War battlefield here in New Orleans. They've got a plaque over there and a monument. If I have time, I'll see if I can drive over there after I leave the cemetery here. I read a little bit about the cemetery this morning before I came here while I was having breakfast. And so I really can't remember if this graveyard is part of the battlefield. I think it was. I know next door, I'm pretty sure next door was the battlefield, but I think maybe this was part of the battlefield where the soldiers were laid to rest. I know I saw some plaques coming in, so I'm gonna drive up there and see if the plaques give any more information about this cemetery and the battlefield, which is next door. Let's go take a look and see what the plaques say. And so I, I happen to notice this, Chalmette National Cemetery. It says, the United States Congress established this site as a national cemetery in 1864 for the reinterment of Union soldiers who died in Civil War hospitals and were buried in various nearby locations. Over 15,000 veterans of American wars and their, and their descendants are buried here of these, 6,773 are unknown. Well, that's a lot of unknowns. A variety of headstones and inscriptions mark the graves. And you can just pause the video if you want to look closer at the different types of headstones here. And it looks like there's a pathway here to the battlefield and some more plaques. I don't know if the other plaque mentioned this, but these were Union soldiers who died in the Gulf area during the Civil War. So the battles here in New Orleans or you know, in this area. It also served as the site for reburials of soldiers from battlefield cemeteries in the region. This plot of ground was part of the battlefield during the Battle of New Orleans. Only four U.S. veterans of the War of 1812 are buried here. None of the British who died in the battle are buried in the cemetery. The National Park Service received stewardship of the cemetery in 1933. The peaceful aspect that so often envelops the cemetery provides a moment in which we, the living, may acknowledge the contribution of those who have fought to defend this country. And here's a map of the cemetery, and I don't think I mentioned it, but right back here is the Mississippi River. So this cemetery is right on the Mississippi. It's interesting, it says that by 1945, all available burial sites were either occupied or reserved, and the cemetery was closed. So closed in 1945, it was reopened briefly in the 1960s for burial of Vietnam War veterans. An occasional funeral still occurs for those who have one of the few remaining reserved plots or for widows of veterans already in the cemetery. They can be buried together. And just pause this video if you'd like to read the full information here. The Freedmen's Cemetery. Here lie the remains of ex-slaves, the Freedmen's. The cemetery was established by the Freedmen's Bureau in 1867 when the Bureau received permission to use four acres of the former battlefield as a civilian burial ground. The property reverted to other ownership when the Bureau was discontinued and the cemetery gradually fell into ruins. All above ground traces disappeared before the end of the 19th century. Now, I wonder if that's this, this section here, or if it's inside the gates. 
it's not really clear. It says, well, here lies the remains of ex-slaves. So I guess it must be right here on this area, which I thought was the battlefield. Oh, look, more, more walkers. I guess not only is this a war memorial, but it's a great place for people to exercise. Other than the humidity and the really awful smell of oil or gas or whatever that is, sulfur, this is a very beautiful place. So yeah, all above ground traces, I guess, meaning headstones and grave markers, disappeared before the end of the 19th century. How sad. This week I want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to Eliza R. Thank you, Eliza, for your very kind and very generous donation to my channel using YouTube Super Thanks. It's very much appreciated. I also want to thank all of you who have taken the time to subscribe to my channel as well. That really helps my channel and is very appreciated too. Until our next road trip to the cemetery together, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.